it's just value, right? Like it's always remembering that. And I think that's something that we're so prone to forget as marketers because we, we do get so lost in the sauce when it comes to data and numbers that we totally forget that there's a real human being on the other side of the device who's taking time out of their day to complete an action. And so when you look at it like that, I think, you know, and you aim to provide value I'm like, how much, how can I provide the most value for my customer at this point in their journey? Then your remarketing ads are going to write themselves because your, your heads, you're starting the right place. Hello and welcome to another a live 12 day, days of Christmas episode of The Robust Marketer. Today, I feel like a kid on Christmas because I get to talk to Jordan Menard. He literally just woke up. I just woke his ass up. He jumped online. He's, I think you've just been, I get the sense you've just been working your ass off so much that you just sort of like, you, you set a time, you're like, now I got a little holiday downtime and you're actually like getting a little rest in. But if you don't know Jordan, Jordan is uh, a Facebook ads creative genius. We, when we were looking uh, to bring people out to Vegas to speak, Tim Burr's like, you got to get Jordan. You got to get, and I was like, I didn't know him. And I, and then I looked into it more. I looked into what you've done with consulting.com. He spent millions of, of profitable dollars. He's got some really awesome creative uh, insights and, and technical insights about Facebook ads. So I'm super excited to bring him to Las Vegas. Welcome to the robust marketer today, Jordan. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. Um, like I said, uh, you hit the nail on the head. Uh, Q4 has been a lot of grinding and, uh, sat down for one second and just passed out. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's amazing to be here, man. To be honest, like, uh, you know, some of the guys that are on this, in this lineup, you know, I've been looking up to for four to five years. So it's crazy to, to be standing next to them. That's, that's so cool. So why don't you give us uh, your hero's journey, how you got to where you are today, where you started from sure. and what, and what you've accomplished over the past year or two. Yeah, so it goes back for me to um, I was in junior college um, right after high school. I had like kind of bounced around a little bit, um, moved o- moved all over. Um, I was in junior college and I had intentions of going to law school. Um, I was in speech and debate and I was selling real estate websites uh, over the phone, just uh, cold calling agents. Um and searching through, uh, re- you know, just finding agents on Google, um, calling them and asking them if they wanted to buy a, a property search widget that my company had developed. And uh, I was getting paid um, uh, draw, uh, so commission draw against minimum wage. And yeah, no leads, no nothing. Then one day I saw um, when I was cl- you know, crawling through the SERPs, uh, I saw at the top of one of them uh, a, a, a Google ad an AdWord ad, a search ad. And so uh, I clicked it and it took me to this uh, black and green wireframe website. I'll never, never forget it. And I just remember instantly realizing what he was doing. And I just thought, here I am going page by page, link by link, looking for these people. And he's just right at the top of the search engine. I have to learn how to do that. And uh, spent the next two years doing nothing but learning uh, online ads, trying to find a, a gig, started off an affiliate. And then um, about two years ago, um, just by chance, uh, got a got a call with Sam at consulting.com um, about a year and a half ago, and then uh, got into the info space. And once, once that happened, it was pretty much uh, hit the ground running. Info is such an interesting space. You know, we're doing it to some extent, Sam, is is a really interesting character with it. His approach, his super broad approach. I've just and I literally just find myself watching his stuff. What's right. it been like being a part of that, and obviously being like a driving force behind it? And, and what what have you really brought to the table in that endeavor? Would you say? Yeah. So um, I had the the biggest month on with with social ads. So uh, that the company's ever had um, was was driven by me. Um, we had the best year, uh, this year. Um, so a lot of the, the social ads that, you know, were done, I, I took us to over uh, 30,000 a day. Um, Sunday, some days we would be spending North of 40. It was just, it was wild. Um, and then I, 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 I brought us there. Um, and then this past year, uh, before I decided to get, go my own way and, um, focus on the creative agency side of things, um, which is what I'm doing now. 
um, I really brought us to, you know, like I said, the, on uh, Facebook and Instagram, spending that, that uh, you know, the five figure clip every single day profitably. And then we had a, a record breaking month uh, about halfway through the year uh, this year. Um, but I wrote a lot of different ads, a lot of uh, different buying strategies um, are, are things I brought into the table. Um, but I really liked a, a lot of uh, copywriting, focusing on just constantly writing good ads and, um, you know, really good manual bidding strategies are, are, to, are, are the two things that I think um, I really brought the account to another level with. You seem like a rare breed of someone who's got such a strong sense of the creative as well as the data. I was actually just watching another interview of yours when you were talking about, you know, really noticing that people that the, the you know, the, the conversion rates fluctuate a lot during days when, uh, you, you know, when people get paid for instance, just, just things like that. But thinking about things in terms of the, the story the data tells, but then also being able to write your own stories with the creative side of things. Would you say that's been a big part of your success with Facebook ads? Yeah, most definitely. And that's actually, um, Sam um, talks about that. He he uh, he refers to me um, as what's called like a full stack buyer. Um, he says it's full stack. Um, so yeah, I go from the data to the creative, and it's like I, I was the one person that was doing it. Right? It, it was just me. Um, and yeah, I really love both. Um, I think the way um, the best way to look at it, I think, is like um, the person closest to the problem is the best person to come up with a solution. So it's like when you're in the data all day and you're really looking at patterns, understanding what's happening and starting to see emerging trends, it's like who better than that person to address the issue because uh, they know the problem most in depth. Um, so I think that's kind of how both those skill sets kind of develop at the same time. Very cool. I think one, one, of the reasons, uh, one of the reasons I think Tim suggests you is funny. He was like, oh, and I know he, I know he like, likes my stuff too. Like I know he's, he's, you know, he's learned from me or they get, but it's Christmas. So let's be charitable to Tim. And yeah. you know, let's yeah. talk a little bit, we'll talk a little bit about, about like what you, you know, the growth that you've had in that group and, and with, with the methods and things like that. Most definitely. So when I, um, <clears throat> when I, I went to Tim Bird's mastermind um, and I just remember hearing some of his stuff and being like, Oh, so that's basically what I do. Just more organized, more thought out and better. Like, you know, it happened like multiple times. Um, and I, afterwards we sat down, I cracked open the, my account and showed him and we just started talking. And um, Tim has such a phenomenal Facebook mind. It's, it's mm. unbelievable. The guy's understanding of the auction process and, um, you know, how, how bidding can manipulate an auction process to create incredibly low front end, um, you know, and just so many things that he does and strategies that he utilizes I think uh, every media buyer can benefit from, like hands down. But I think the things that he's really, really impressive on is teaching people how to take literally what they have right now and turn it into a very powerful and scalable uh, manual bid uh, campaign. And I think uh, Tim can really teach anyone how to do that. It's very impressive. Um, but yeah, when it comes to Facebook IQ, I just don't think there are a lot of people on Tim Bird's level. By my personal opinion, he's gonna love that. That's fantastic, <laughs> and, I, and I fully agree. You know, it's it, he's he's a fun guy to be around, and and it always surprises me almost when he does roll his sleeves up and gets back. Like you know, I just spent you know two days on a yacht with him in, in right, Bichette and uh, uh, it, it it is when he it, he does definitely have the goods that back up uh, that back up his persona, and he's a, and I can't wait to hang out with all of you guys in uh, in Las Vegas. I so, know. <laughs> I'm so excited. It is going to be a wild week. I, I cannot wait. I had I had so much fun at the mastermind. And um, Tim, I remember Tim, uh, he literally gave me two sentences. He said, like, you know, it's like, what do you think about this, 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 and this? And I just remember being quiet for like two minutes processing and being like, oh, my God, that's huge, right? It's huge. And he yeah. wanted all, all he recommended doing was renaming a standard event into a custom conversion and seeing if that lowered the price. And sure enough, it did. Um, so yeah, and that, that happened just, we were hanging out, right? We, it wasn't mm -hmm. during one of the sessions. It wasn't, you know, we were just hanging out and that conversation transpired and it ended up being the most valuable piece of advice. So mm -hmm. I'm really Very looking forward cool. to hanging out with everyone. Nice man. Where, so you're in New York. Is that where you were? Yep. I'm in Brooklyn right now. I'm, uh, I'm moving to, uh, San Diego, um, in February. Oh, perfect. 
Yeah, so That's came awesome. out here and then uh, for uh, about a year and a half, and now I'm uh, heading back. So let's talk about the info space for a second. We have a couple speakers yeah. at Facebook Mastery Live. Uh, Jeremy Haynes as well is gonna, and, I, and, it's, and you know, I love this info space. It's, it's, it, you know, he had a really interesting perspective on it. Just saying like, you, everyone underestimates what they have to teach, what they have to give. So like the info space is really just in its infancy, even though we do see a lot of ads, you know, especially when we're in the game. Right. But talk a little bit about the info space, where you see it going, why you love it so much. Um, yeah, I mean, this is a great question. Um, so I love the info space for a few reasons. I think, um, you know, what, what Jeremy touched on is so true. I think, um, you know, you're going to get a ton of haters. Um, I actually go through some of the negative comments, um, in the presentation that I have for iStack, um, and just how to deal with them and stuff. You're going to get like an unrealistic amount of negative, um, feedback. Um, and it's, it's brutal, right? Cause it's the internet. Um, but on top of that, I think if that's also one of the things I love so much about it is it's such a difficult space to actually be profitable in. Um, and I think one of the reasons is you have that really long optimization window. So with, with in the info space, typically you're going to get that front end conversion, which is like a ebook giveaway, a webinar, whatever it is. And then you're going to have people that go from there to, uh, you know, they go through that program, whatever, and then they decide if the paid program is for them and make that decision there. So I think one of the things I really like, um, just on a workflow standpoint is the optimization window, uh, for, you know, when from the first touch to close is so long, it makes media buying extremely difficult. Um, because you don't, that conversion doesn't happen for so much long, you know, with e-com, you're going to have that conversion happen. What a minute after the click, you know, yep. for a lot, a lot of the info products, it's going to be minimum a week, minimum, you know? So I think the, the, the difficulty of buying ads, um, it requires a, such a careful process and, you know, you have to really pay attention to data and how, you know, how numbers are moving. And so I love it for that. Um, but then the, the other side, uh, the more human side, what I really love is um, you know, what, what you mentioned earlier. I love how incredible it is when you like your product actually helps people, you know, and if you work with a good product and you that it's a real business and they, you know, they're actually focused on helping like some of my clients right now that I'm working with, you see some of the 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 reviews, the testimonials that their customers leave. And like, it, it sounds cheesy, but like it really did change someone's life. You know, it really did. Um, and so I think those two things just kind of made me, uh, I didn't like plan to go get an info. It wasn't like I set out for it. Um, but once I found myself here, I think for those two reasons, I really liked it and uh, just kind of went all in on it. I, I, there's a couple, a bunch of things I want to touch on. The, fir the first one is just yesterday we were going through one of these negative feedback loops on one of the ads. Like, so when we, when we were trying to push Bangkok, I did this ad where it was like, take the plunge. And it was me jumping into a pool. It was, uh, our, top it was our top performing uh, retargeting ad. And so we did a similar one for this one where we were, we were in Phuket and my friend Van, uh, amazing marketer, did a double backflip off the top of the yacht. And it's now our, it's the best performing remarketing ad here. But we had this one guy being like, this has got to be the world's shittiest ad. And then, but then it had, it had so many people like it. And I looked at the people who liked it and it was all my friends. It was right. all of mine and Van's friends who were literally just loving the fact that we were getting trolled by this guy. But then this whole conversation sprung up below that was like, hey, actually you're engaging with it. Look at this every time we, and, and they sort of like educated this guy in the thread on how engagement in these ads work. And, right. and I, 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 it's funny, I, the, a couple of people in my company like brought it to my attention, like you might wanna curate this. And so I, instead I just jumped on it and kind of continued the conversation. What is your approach with negative, with negative commentary? Did I do the right thing there or should I cut that one off the pass? No, 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 I, 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 I don't delete anything. Um, I just, I think it's, especially in 2018, it's just, it's best to be real if at all, if you can afford it in any way, you know? If someone's just like, you know, putting a ton of like, you know, they're cussing and writing a bunch of, you know, horrible things like, yeah, definitely delete that, ban them. Um, but as for this, if it's someone who's just like, you know, really being a hater, I think the best thing to do is just to hit it straight on and uh, leave it up. And if you do it right, um, I think it, it's kind of funny. So like in one of the things that I'm going to go over on uh, during my presentation with iStack 
um, uh, at the event is uh, I handled one of those negative uh, comments and addressed it. And I wasn't a jerk, but I definitely uh, was a little bit spicy in the response, you know, definitely through some serious sass. And um, what I found most interesting is other people started defending me. So it wasn't like other employees. It was like literally other people random on social media started commenting on my behalf and saying all this stuff. And once I saw that, it was like, yeah, dude, this is the this is definitely the best way to handle it. Definitely. Yeah, I, I think so, too. And that's what happened in this thread. People are like, you must be new here. Like, kind of, right. you know, all, all these things going back and forth with them. And uh, yeah, so I'm glad I didn't delete it. I think I think we approached that in the right way. Uh, very, very cool. So I want, there was, what else did I, oh, I wanted to talk about the actual info process a little bit. Sure. So you, you talked about the conversion window, the seven day conversion window. And it's just something that, that, you know, we're obviously living this as well. And I wanted to ask you, this is my, my personal like thing I'm super interested in right now is sequential remarketing and being strategic in the messages you hit people rather than just sort of saucing them up with, and that's my question. When you when you bring people through that conversion window, are you very precise about what messages they receive when, or do you leave that to the Facebook algorithm in terms of just having a sequence of ads and just trusting that Facebook will mix it up enough? Yeah, dude, I, I, I love this question actually. Um, remarketing is one of my absolute favorite things to talk about. Um, I think it's, uh, people oftentimes look at it, it's just like, oh yeah, it's great low hanging fruit. Just like, you know, go, go get the people that engaged. And it's just like, I think it's so different than that. I look at it so differently. Um, I always use the metaphor of like, uh, cold traffic and remarketing to being like, uh, let's say you were, you know, for some reason, um, you had decided to, uh, you know, try to, try to pick up a, a romantic encounter in the bar, right? Like you see someone that you think is very attractive across the bar and you decide, you know, they're talking to a few people, but you decide I'm going to walk over there and just, you know, try my best pickup line and hopefully get their number and see what happens there. So you go over there and you do it. Your cheesy pickup line somehow works. You get the number, you head home. Now, if you were going to go to that bar, let's say four days later, and you saw that exact same person and you tried the exact same method, that person who just gave you their phone number for that exact same method a second ago would look at you like you're insane because what you're doing is insane, right? You haven't contextualized how you're gonna communicate to that person with any respect to the history of communication between you two. So therefore, you're gonna come across ridiculous. And so that's something that I, that, that's really what I try to do with all remarketing is like, how can I contextualize the conversation in order for this ad to not only just like work, right, but provide value. Like it, it, it contextualizes the conversation, it remembers where we picked off, and now we're moving forward and continuing the narrative by adding this sequential piece, right? Um, but I think with Facebook's uh, you know, vi visibility and the technology where you can literally remarket based off engagement, clicks, time spent on page, whatever it is, um, yeah, there's really no excuse not to provide that really sequential, um, contextualized remarketing. And that's something that, um, I, I, I really enjoy doing actually. <laughs> and that's something that works across it, everything, you know, right. every space, whether it's info, product reviews, uh, you know, affiliate stuff, all, you know, I, I just think, I think that's the future for sure. It, and it goes back to minority report, you know, huh? you know, to, to literally like, hi, you like that V-neck sweater you bought, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you like more, that. It, and it's just value. It's just providing that other layer of value and contextualization that makes all the difference. So that's super cool to hear. And that's a big part of your process. Yeah. And I, I was just going to say right there, what, what you just said is so key. It's just value, right? Like it's always remembering that. And I think that's something that we're so prone to forget as marketers because we, we do get so lost in the sauce when it comes to data and numbers that we totally forget that there's a real human being on the other side of the device who's taking time out of their day to complete an action. And so when you look at it like that, I think, you know, and you aim to provide value, I'm like, how much, how can I provide the most value for my customer at this point in their journey? then your remarketing ads are going to write themselves because your, your heads, you're starting the right place. I like it. Um, so let's talk a little bit about your agency now. So you've just, you've, you've had this amazing experience architecting one of the most, I think one of the most like interesting info guys in the space, right? Something about Kiwis. 
just something about how blunt Kiwis are. I will literally just put a picture on it. You know, his approach I find really refreshing. So anyways, you've had a great opportunity to work with this guy to really help propel him. So now what you're aiming to focus more on the creative side of things or are you like, talk about your agency, what your goal is. With yeah, yeah, definitely. So, um, you know, I kind of saw what we, what I had done with Sam as like, um, I wanted to do this at a larger scale. Um, and once the campaigns were built, like, um, you know, it was, it, it just wasn't as exciting as when I was building them. And so that's kind of what I realized. Like I wanted to help a lot of people reach that scale. Um, one of the reasons that um, we're technically a creative agency is because I think that in order to successfully buy large scales of media, you have to launch creative almost every day. You have to launch good, high quality creative almost every day. I know no other way to do it. So it's like, if you really want to get to five figures a day and pass that and really deep into that, you know, we made a million, I, you know, I've made a million one month uh, last year or this year on Facebook uh, and, and Instagram in one month, you know? So it's like, in order to get there, you have to launch ads every single day. So what my agency does is focuses on providing the media buying and um, creative strategies uh, for uh, 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 info entrepreneurs. I don't know how you would phrase that. Uh, basically, people looking to really take a new, you know, take a bite out of the info space and get started. Um, we help those entrepreneurs do that. Um, so we're working with a few right now. Uh, Mark Lack. Um, we're really, he's actually going to be the one that I'm showing, um, when I, I I'm going to show you how I add like a thousand dollars of profitable spend at any time I want to his account. Um, so that's what we're going to be going over, but that's what our agency focuses on now. It's, um, the best me buying tactics for info products for entrepreneurs on earth, but led with really, really strong, powerful creative. Very cool. Now, what do you just, so, so people are listening to this. A lot of the people in the, we're, we're live in the ad buyers group here. So a lot of these people love buying media, but maybe, and a lot of them are probably building agencies or they're running e-com stores or things like that, but maybe they haven't thought about becoming, you know, dipping them, dipping their toes into the actual info space. What, like from your experience in this space, like what do you think is the best way to approach that? Do you really need to, do you have, do you, do you have to have something unique? Do you have to take a very specialized aspect of your skill? Do you want to focus on on more biz up on just like, hey, hey, here's how you change your life? Like, what, how would you navigate that space? So I would say the info space is good for anybody who who has something to say. If you have something to say, you know, and you, you know it if you do, you know, you deep down, you know it if you do. If you have something to say, then I think the info space is worth it for you. Um, I know that Sam, he never wanted to be a speaker, never wanted to be anything like that. Um, you know, he, he wanted to be an entrepreneur and that entre and he had some to say and that just kind of led him into where he was going. Um, so I think a lot of uh, people will know if the info space is right for them because of their burden to get whatever they have on their chest off. You know, I think if you really have something to say um, and you have a product that can help people, you have a vision, you know. The best info products that I've seen come from people who see the market and see a, a problem in it, right? They see an area of lacking and their info product is not just them trying to push their celebrity on everyone, but is instead their method of addressing that issue. And I think when people look at it from that standpoint, um, they'll, they'll know if inf the info space is that for them right away. You know, if you've got something to say and you've looked at the market and you think, wow, like, you know, my voice is necessary here in order to help write, uh, you know, a gap in the market, then I think that you should not wait and jump in immediately. That's very cool. And, it, and again, it's, it can be so niche as well. It could be a Facebook marketing thing. It could be a photography class. It could be like, you know, there's all sorts of aspects of your personality that you have spent developing um, so professionally or personally. And there's, and there's just so many different areas. And, 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 and there's so many people that have done it. So it's like, I think when you can combine, you know, your level of insight with ads and sequential remarketing and manual bidding and all these sort of difficult, you know, challenging things. And then, but, but then beyond that, everyone, intro has been done for decades, right? When right. it comes to, okay, you need a lead magnet to start. You need to, you know, yep. you need to nurture a relationship throughout the process. So it's like, yep. there really is a roadmap for at least that first stage of success with info. Yeah, I, you know, I really look at it, um, I, I, I would say it's even more than a roadmap, right? You know, because you're right, it has been around for a long time. 
you know, some of the absolute best advertorials were things that were like, you know, they're written about Rolls Royces, you know, which, and they were, they were just full on stories about, you know, you having this incredible drive in a Rolls Royce. Right. So I think, you know, because of the diversity, like you were talking about, uh, you know, there's, there's so many ways for you to plug your info product into people's lives. I think um, there really is kind of a system that will let you know how to do it and how to do it right. Um, you know, for example, like when I when I approach, um, you know, we, we got a new client uh, a couple of weeks ago, and we just had their second session. And in their first session, I had put up something. I had noticed something in their account that indicated, you know, may, maybe we can skip a step. Maybe we can go ahead and, and skip this step. And um, I created this this uh, campaign and said, uh, hey guys, watch this real closely in the next two days. If it doesn't do X X X X X, go ahead and cut it. So uh, fast forward to the last meetup and I'm like, hey guys, can you pull up that campaign? I want to see it. And sure enough, everything else had done what it was supposed to and this failed miserably. And I just remember thinking like, dang, you really can't skip a step. You really can't. And you're right. There, it's The, the, the methods have been proven. Um, the model has been out there a long time and there is a right or wrong move for sure. Um, now it's not to say the same, like everyone's path is the same, but I think there is a structure and a format that people can follow to greatly increase their chances of success for sure. And then allow them to innovate at the edges. Yes. Innovate, innovate with the creative and innov innovate with the content even but when right. it comes which, to the actual which, steps of conversion, you follow, that's, follow that's, where they, that's where you're, you're excited to, to innovate, right? Like that's where yeah. you're, re you're needed, right? People want your, your, your play there. They want your twist there. Very cool. Okay. So we have, we just have a, like, you know, if, if anyone listening live has any questions, feel free to add them in here. There's a question about an e-com client, which I know is, I, you know, I don't know how much e-com you've actually run, but they're asking about using single can, images or carousels. Yeah, I, I, I can definitely talk e-com. Um, I'm not, I, I just think that there's probably people that are, uh, have a more valuable opinion than me. Um, uh, but I'm, I'm happy to talk, uh, talk about it. Um, was that, uh, say that again. Do you mostly use video, single image, or carousel if you're selling gaming products? Um, I would say, you know, it, it's hard to say what type of format um, I, I absolutely love the best. Um, I would anticipate um, vertical video working the best. Um, that's just me guessing based off the ads that I've bought. Um, yeah. Every single account that I have, I buy image ads, I buy video ads, I buy carousel ads. Every single one. Um, so it's, it's hard to say just right off the bat. Um, I would say, um, you know, test all three of them with, you know, maybe in one campaign, see which one gets the best results. And that's going to let you know. I think so. I, one of the approaches that, um, that Depeche uh, Mandalia is going to be talking in Las Vegas as well, articulated in his Bangkok presentation was just ca like canvas ads, the amount of uh, like amazing kind of experience you can create with a branded video on top and then singular products that might be featured in that video. Uh, below it, like he, he's he's producing our you know return on ad spends of into the thousands. Yeah, uh, I I use, uh, but again, that's a tight brand. Right, right. I I think not. I I mean, I couldn't agree more with his take on Canvas, though. Um, I think no matter where you are at, you should be using Canvas. Um, I have a, a lesson in the ad leaks, uh, a unit in the ad leaks group um, that goes over how to create a Canvas, and we, we've seen incredible results with the instant experiences. So yeah, I I. I I could not back him up more. Very cool. You, we, one of the, I was watching this previous interview you did on, on YouTube uh, in, in Brooklyn there, and you talked a little bit about uh, the way that you like to, everyone, a lot of people have different ideas about the way you should do uh, the amount of creatives per ad set. And I really liked your answer. I think the guy who you were interviewing was, was, a, one, was a one creative to one ad set kind of yeah. guy. But just your, again, it goes to, to the way you think about the algorithm. And that maybe comes from learning from Tim and all, all these different ways. But being able to, to say, okay, you want to have you want to have a healthy amount of creatives live in any given moment in an ad group because it makes it more resilient. Oh, it most more resilient and less likely to go down. Most definitely. Um, yeah, I, I um, the way that I do creative testing is pretty. You know, it, it can be pretty elaborate. Um, I'll take one angle and test four images, find my winners. You know, take those out and then test headlines and then test you know buttons, whatever. Um, but it, it's typically a very involved process in which I end up leaving the angle in its own campaign. 
um, and testing the, the angle against itself um, to, to find the best rendition of itself. Um, and that's really what I've found has been an instrumental thing that I've done is like, it's, I've, I let through my testing, I let the algorithm optimize the creative to where it shows me through data what the best collection of variables is and what I need to tweak. You know, it needs to be this image with this headline, you know, with this body copy and this button um, delivered to this audience. You know, whatever you're gonna do, the way that I've found that I structured my creative testing allows me to find that exact combination that's gonna be most profitable for me. Very cool. Yeah, so keep your questions coming here if you've got them. What do you believe in more, audience or creative? Do you test audiences more or creatives more? Um, this is a good question. Um, and it, it, it depends, right? Um, I think that what do you believe more? Uh, you know, I think that, that it, it depends on the, the variant of the account. You know, some people need to make more audiences. Some people need to make more creatives. Um, I will say this. Uh, you know, I, I've seen ads um, with good creatives work with no targeting at all, just broad, just broad, literally empty, good ads will still work. Um, I can't say that I've seen absolute horrible ads solely work because that they were targeted right. So um, in that sense, if I was put, you know, gun to my head, that's where I would take it. Um, but I think both are, are so important. Very cool. That's a perfect way to think about it, right? You'd rather have that ability to create a good ad that can grab, because that's what all advertising was before this. Right. That's what all advertising was before this. And if Facebook ever goes away, that's what all advertising will still be. It's just putting, it's broadcasting a good offer with a good creative and yeah. people will, will, will find it or not. And I think that's info in Facebook, right? Like you said, you know, it's like even if Facebook, if Facebook goes away, it's like now with long form or with, uh, you know, where the info space is now, you have to write really good ads. There's no ifs, ands, or buts, you know, because your competition yeah. is. Um, and I think, you know, uh, again, the, the power of a good ad, uh, you know, it's it's really hard to understate, but a, a good audience cannot be accessed, you know, without good creative. So um, that, that's where my mind boils down. We've got an in-depth one here. Do you test those creatives in PPE or conversion? One guy told me that if you test creatives on conversion, they show the ideal audience. But when you test it on PPE, you get it just sort of like lumped with the engagers. So your ideal audience, what buyer should you test them against? Uh, yeah, with so um, I'm going to test them uh, uh, primarily against conversions um, because I, 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 I just want to know how things are converting. Um, I think that's the most important. But that being said, I run engagement every single account that I'm in. Um, so as for like, does Facebook deliver to uh, you know the, the purchasers versus the engagers? Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised. I don't think that that would like, if I found out that was true, I wouldn't be shocked. Um, but the social proof we know improves the buying process and improves our ads uh, quality score, relevant score, whatever you want to say. Um, it, it makes Facebook like it more. Um, so in that sense, you know, they're, they're working on the same. But if you're looking for, you know, if budget's limited, I would always test on conversions because that's going to tell you how well, the you know, you're, you're, you're getting that ROI, which is most important at the end of the day. Totally. Uh, we got a bunch of good questions here coming in. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. What's this one? After finding a winning ad, how do you optimize your ad? And also, there's a, that's a two-part question. So after you find a winning ad, what sort of phase of optimization does it go into? And then I, I also, do you use any third-party tools? Um, I typically don't use any third-party tools. I've had a few that I've liked. I've liked ads we do. Um, Zach Freeman makes that um, over at Ecom Hacks. Um, but typically, um, you know, I'm going to use things like uh, Google search terms um, and see what people are searching a lot recently. Um, Buzz Sumo, see what's trending and what's doing well on social. Um, but uh, as for how I find my, my winning creative and scale it, um, Typically, what I'll do is I'll do my research like I'm talking about. I'll go into Google search trends, see what people are, are, are typing in. Um, I'll take a look at BuzzSumo, see what articles are trending on social. Then I'll go and, and lay out my angle. And my like I said before, my angle is going to have a lot of different nuances that test the creative against itself, right? 
It's going to be an image. It's going to be a video. It's going to be, uh, you know, all these different headlines. You know, typically I'll turn one angle into like 84 ads. So I have, you know, this 80 some odd ads and then, you know, it'll go down to a few winners and those will typically all be with the learn more button. I'll then take those winners, put them into a bigger ad set and then split test them against sign up or whatever, I, whatever button I want to test. And that'll be the last test. At that point, one angle will typically have generated about four to five ads that work pretty well. And then I can bring them into uh, a manual ad set that has, you know, and, and start bullying with them. But I always like to test it first, find my winners based on the market, and then bring them into manual bidding campaigns where I'm more aggressive with my approach. And that leads right into the next question, which is when do you start testing different bids, which is basically right at this point. When you yeah. have a winning combination of audience or creative, uh, that, and that's when you start bullying, as you say, with manual bidding. Yeah, so I, I know I know Tim um, has the ability to kind of just charge it. Like he just he, first thing he'll look at it, and be like, uh, you know, I'm bullying right off the bat, just you know, going all in. Um, I don't know how he does that. <laughs> That's like I that scares me. I can't do it like that. Um, my approach is definitely methodical. Um, I'm gonna take it out. Uh, you know, I'm gonna take the the, the creative stack, like I just said, um, and build that out across like usually eight to twelve ad sets. Uh, testing different audiences at really low budgets. I'm going to start to figure out what ads are working the best with what audiences and what I can expect to have as an auto KPI. And remember with me, the front end KPI sometimes doesn't tell the whole story, right? You could be getting $5 leads all day and you think that's great until you realize that you spent three grand and not generated a sale. Yeah. And that's very real. That's just very real. Um, so typically I'll like to let the front end metrics kind of balance out, bounce around. Um, and then once I get those, move them into a manual, uh, where I start bidding more aggressively based on what the convert, uh, the creative is telling me it's going to get cost at market. Very cool. Where do you get the inspiration for your creative? Cause I can just imagine you sitting down and have, and, and blasting out 80 ads. Like do you, you sort of let the, you, you obviously have the structure, like, you know, you know what kind of structure a little bit, you know the, the, the product, the spirit of the product, you understand the product really well. And then do you just sort of freestyle on top of that? It's, ah, uh, man. Cool. It's like, it's cocaine. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I highly recommend crack, um, just like copious <laughs> amounts of it. Uh, no, it's, uh, it is, this is one of the hardest things um, because there's some days you just don't feel inspired. You know, you just, you just don't. Um, you know, maybe, you know, you're sitting on the M train for an hour and a half, you know, and stuck under the tunnel. It's like the last thing you want to do is like bust out this inspirational copy about how good life is. Um, so I think, you know, one of the things you, um, and this is something I'm going to go over, you have to find and create a mindset where you want to defend your brand without being a jerk. So when you actually have the mindset to where like you, you, you proactively look to defend the brand against people who are going to talk shit on it, who are, you know, whatever they're going to do. I think that's the mindset you want to, you want to have every single time you write an ad. Like I know for me, it's like one of the things I'll do, one of the things I would do is Sam, there was this uh, review by this guy named Wilkins and it was a customer review video. But every time I watched that review video, every single time, I thought, holy shit, right? I, I could sell the next one of the, this guy, right? There's another factory worker out there who's just like this guy. Maybe my ad will get the next one. And then, boom, the motivation would be there. It doesn't matter how bad things were. And so I think it's that mindset, you know, truly believing in your product, truly believing in who you work for, fully understanding how your product functions, thinking about it. And then coming to the creative board with that mindset where you're actively looking to defend, um, I've found produces the best creative. Very cool. Now we're running out of time here. There are a few other questions. Maybe we'll be able to go through and, and answer a few of those uh, in text format. Sure. But we talked a little bit about what you're going to be talking about in Las Vegas, but we haven't talked as much about the format. And to me, the format. And the way you've described it to me is one of the most interesting things. So give your presentation, like what you're actually going to do on stage in, in Vegas in a nutshell for everyone. Yeah. So what I'm actually going to do on stage is um, we're going to go over the, it's going to be a two part presentation. Um, 
The first uh, half or a little bit less than half, I'm going to go over uh, a few things just about um, the process, some of the things, that the three keys that you need to have. Um, but what I'm going to actually be showing, I'm actually going to go into my business manager. And uh, during the second half, I'm actually going to launch a campaign that everyone sees me make on stage and go from nothing to $1,000 a day in profitable ad spend, um, basically just structuring it really smart. And we hope it's profitable. Um, <laughs> uh, 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 1K a day and actually adding it and launching it. Um, right in front of everyone for real in real time. I love it. I think that's such a cool format. I'm going to be taking notes for sure because uh, that's obviously super relevant to what we're doing. But anyone who's who's looking for traction, to me, traction is always the key word. Like you, it's, you can throw up an ad and you get a, you know, it's really w w when, when people start engaging with it and people start, you know, seriously looking at the offer that you're throwing out there, traction to me is the key word. And if, if you have a process by which people can, more be more likely to gain traction with whatever they're promoting. It's going to be hugely valuable, I think. Yeah, that's I I, I mean you, uh, you you call it traction, I call it momentum, but it's the exact same thing, right? We're talking about the exact same thing, and so that's really what I'm aiming to do is like helping people find a way to instantly build back that momentum if they might have lost it, you know, somewhere, you know, before. Maybe they had a bad month beforehand. Um, maybe they've, you know, they've been in a creative drought, whatever it is. Um, really what we're looking to do is how to instantly, you know, recreate that momentum, get it back on your side, get that traction going and get those ads that are really going to generate some engagement. And even people that are already, you know, even just applying the principles to people that already have successful campaigns, it's good. It can be jet fuel as well. 100%. And that's so that cool about this business. Right. And that's really who it's designed for, right? That really who this is designed for is for the people who are like, they're ready for this. They just haven't given it a name yet. You know, it's like they're, they're ready for this process. They just, they just haven't given it a name. And um, what's cool about it is, you know, any, any account can do it. Um, anyone that's really, it's not just info. You could do it with e-com and we'll be talking about that a little bit. Um, but primarily, you know, for people that are in e-com, it's just going to crush. Or sorry, sorry. Where, info, info. Yeah. Uh, where can I send a hand sketched image of both of you? You can send that to, <laughs> to, to, to team at isaactraining.com. That will go right on our social media. Uh, I'm very, very excited about that. Thank you. Yeah, I, I would love to see this. That, that, that sounds fantastic. What are your plans for the holidays? Are you going to be in Brooklyn? Do you have family upstate? What are you going to do? I am heading down to uh, San Diego to spend it with my girlfriend and my family. Very excited. How about you? Lovely. I'm going to be spending it with my wife and my daughter and her family out here in Victoria, British Columbia. So West Coast as well. Right. West Coast. That's great. <laughs> so, okay, yeah, I'm flying directly from San Diego to Vegas. Beautiful. Uh, really enjoyed chatting with you today. Can't wait to party with you in Vegas and, uh, and, and really, I think, help people with, with what you've laid out here today. It's going to be fantastic. I cannot wait. Thank you so much for having me, man. This is going to be so cool. Uh, I feel like uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm getting to, I'm, I'm going to be on stage with people that like I've looked up to for so long. It is so surreal. I just, I, I can't wait to get out there. So thank you so much. And uh, I cannot wait to party with you guys in, uh, in Vegas. And I'm gonna to have to bring it. Abu Herrera is also gonna send us a physical framed image. So I'm gonna, I'll connect with, <laughs> with Abu regarding this amazing piece of art yeah. that will be created to, you know, commemorate this 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 inaugural discussion that we've had. It's the first of many, hopefully. Dude, I love this. Um, and I'm gonna hop into the Facebook ad buyers group right now, see if there's any questions to be answered, um, and I'll answer them over text. Okay. Cheers, brother. Merry Christmas. All right, brother. All right, guys. Uh, wow, that was fantastic. Jordan is an inspiring Facebook guy. Someone who's got his hands on the controls on a daily basis, you know, with big, big spend, big, big expertise that he's generating. And, and that's just the tip of the iceberg with him because he's got all this creative stuff as well. Um, I'm, good choice by Tim again to, to bring in a guy like this. So this is the last interview, I think, before Christmas. I might try to squeeze another one in on, on Monday, but I've really enjoyed doing these. I'm going to keep doing them. Uh, with with all with all these speakers that we have coming to our events, and uh, again, if you haven't got your tickets yet, you can take a little break over Christmas. Uh, but basically, Tuesday next week, the price goes up again. Uh, so you want to make sure you grab your tickets uh, as quick as possible. 
Uh, they are selling out. It's going to be fantastic. Anyway, I hope we can provide you some value today in the Ad Buyers Group. We really appreciate it. Abu, I cannot wait to receive a, uh, a hand uh, carved piece of art or something like that. It's absolutely fantastic. Make my, make my Christmas.